Hello, uh, Kubrick Lover 1972, back with another installment of my entire DVD and Blu-ray collection. Um, I noticed in my last video I said said to you that um, I, if, if the video went on a little too long, I would just cut it short, and I decided to keep going. Um, I don't know if that was the greatest idea, because um, I don't know how many of you would want to watch an hour video. I mean, I'm not quite sure on that, but... Since I did that video, I, th I thought, you know, maybe that's not a good idea to do an hour-long video. Um, and, to and tonight I was um, looking through my collection. Um, I told you at this point I, I might get to like a miscellaneous stage where things were mix mixed up. Um, but then I looked through my stuff and um, I, I thought maybe I should just keep on the theme as as as, as best I can and as long as I possibly can um, certain directors group their films together because some of their films are sort of all over the place um, not all the directors but some of them um, so I'm trying to group them together or, or group actors together or group uh, an actor who's also a direct a director who's also acted or what you know so and after all that, that, then we'll get to like miscellaneous or, or things based on themes like all horror, horror, horror movies or what have you. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to do these, these next videos kind of short, like, um, you know, just one or two directors per, per, per video. And, uh, I'll try not, maybe I'll try just to be 40 minutes or under or even 30 minutes or under. Um, so anyways, in this particular video, we're going to focus on uh, uh, Christopher Nolan, and then uh, there's a film after Christopher Nolan that kind of reminds me of his one of his movies, so I'll show you that. Um, I've, I've, I've taken some directors, and then I've taken a few other films that were not made by that director, but have a similar kind of uh, genre or what have you. So in the terms of Christopher Nolan, there's a film that he made that there's another film that sort of reflects that same kind of uh, atmosphere. And then after um, we've gone through the Christopher Nolan, then uh, I'll show you some films I have of Ben Affleck. So anyways, let's get to the video. So anyways, this is the first one I have. It's called Following. It was Christopher Nolan's first feature. Um, it's a really good um, low-budget movie. Um, I believe it was shot for an incredibly low amount of money, maybe a few thousand, um, under 10,000 possibly, uh, maybe. Um, when we get to showing my books, there's a book called Fast, Cheap, and Under Control by Noel Gaspard, I think is the author. And um, this this film I, is, is featured in that, I believe. Uh, um, and... Um, Anyways, so so this is one of those movies that, um, you know, um, he, he was really, um, he, he used his limitations and made the best out of them, you know. So, uh, I'll, I'll read this. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to read everything when, I, when we go through these videos, but I'll deliberate. So, Following is a wickedly clever story of how a young man's obsession with following people leads him into a dark underworld. Bill, the unlikely hero, is a marginalized but intriguing everyman who follows strangers at random on the street. When Cobb, a man Bill has been following, catches him in the act, Bill is drawn into Cobb's world of breaking into flats and prying into the personal lives of their victims. In Cobb, Bill finds a strange companion part mentor, part confessor, and part evil twin. With an ingenious structure that involves flash-forwards and doubling back, the film tests our knowledge and understanding, just as the protagonist is being duped into elaborate triple cross. Following heralded Christopher Nolan as a promising new talent whose promise was amply confirmed with the memento. So this was the winner of a Tiger Award at Rotterdam, Official selection at Toronto International Film Festival. Official selection at San Francisco International Film Festival. It's got a commentary by Christopher Nolan. Second angle showing director's shooting script. Ability to restructure the story chronologically. So, yeah. Um, and and it, when, when you hear that name Cobb, of course, I believe that's 
Leonardo DiCaprio's character in Inception, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if you if you remember, um, I'm pretty sure on that. But if you want to like double confirm it, just you know, um, leave a comment. So um, yeah, so so this is just a really good movie. Um, I think it's kind of sh I think it's fairly short. Um, how long is this movie? Um, I think it's under 90 minutes. And maybe it's under 90 minutes because of budgetary reasons. So, and the catch line is you're never alone. So, the next one is Memento. It's autographed. Uh, the person that autographed it is Joe Pantliano. Uh, I also have his autograph on one of my Wachowski, uh, the Wachowskis uh, Bound, and I have it on the Matrix box set of the DVD that I had before I had the Blu-ray. Um, so he was at the Connecticut Film Festival, and you know he he was saying you're not. It was an event I was attending, and um, he, he he just didn't want to just give a, a um, an autograph for, the, for just for uh, he, he, because I was involved with the Connecticut Film Festival and still am today. And he he knew I was just not not some guy just wanting to you know take take an autograph be kind of greedy or whatever, you know, like that, that I was, um, you know, that wasn't being selfish, I guess. I, I don't know, but, but, you know, so anyways, um, yeah, he was, he was doing a documentary about, uh, bipolar disorder. Um, and, and it's called, um, the documentary is called, no kidding, me too, or no kidding, no, no kidding, me too. So, you know, um, anyways, this particular version of uh, of uh, Memento, it's like a file, Manila file, or something like that. I'm trying to pull this out of here. Um, <clears throat> I like this film, but. Um, the DVD itself is kind of confusing because it makes you play a game in order to get to the special features and in order to um, play play the movie. Um, let's see. I think I have a sheet of paper telling me how to. See, so it gives you these pamphlets, these papers with tests and... Um, you know this. So, as I told, as I've said before, I, I have um, where I work. There's a bookseller below. They the friend the friend sell the the library sell used book, books, used DVDs. So they have one on Memento, and I've, I have it put to the side. And I, I might watch that one more more so because this is just too hard to maneuver around in. Um, because it makes you it makes you want to um, um, it, it makes you answer these riddles and all this kind of stuff and and it's kind of hard to get through. But anyways, th this particular film is about a guy who um, doesn't know what has happened to him, and the story is being told in the reverse. So you see the ending of the movie. Well, not the ending of the movie. The ending of the story in the movie. And you see the beginning of the story at the end of the movie. And he, this, the, the main character played by Guy Pearce, is, he has um, short-term memory loss. Um, but even his long-term memory might be in question. And he's trying to figure out what's happening. And, and um, Carrie Ann Moss is also in this movie. Um who played Trinity in the, in the Matrix series. Um, I think Carrie Ann Moss, I think she was in Chocolat. 
I can't remember. If you if you remember if Carrie Ann Moss was in Chalk a lot, just leave it down there. Um, but you know, he leaves tattoos on his on his body so he can figure things out. He puts post-it notes on his hotel room on the on the on the the mirror, you know. Um, but but it's a really fascinating movie, and I highly recommend it. So, with those two films, it launched him into you know bigger budget movies, and the first, and he he um, did the best of the franchise, in my opinion, of of, of the superhero Batman. So, the first one was Batman Begin Batman Begins. Um, this one. It's a bunch of special features on it, I believe. Yes, it does. Yes. Um, it's a really good movie. Um, I think the Batman's that came before. Not that I watched all of them. I watched I watched the Michael Keaton Batman, and then I watched. Uh, the following one with uh, Danny DeVito as a penguin. I, I didn't care for either of those. The Danny DeVito one was probably worse. Uh, but I I, I I didn't care for those. I, I think I, some people really enjoy um, those versions, but I, I don't. I haven't seen George Clooney or Val Kilmer as Batman. Um, I don't know if I, I feel motivated enough to want to see it but but this is this is a load of special features it has um concept design and development of the film as well as the casting of batman himself shaping mind and body observe christian bale's transformation into batman batman the tumbler the reinvention of the batmobile gotham city rises witness the creation of gotham city the bat cave wayne manor and more Saving Gotham City, the development of miniatures, CGI, and effects for the monorail chase scenes. Genesis of the, the Bad, a look at the Dark Knight's incarnation and influences on the film. Confidential files go beyond the movie and discover fads, facts and story points not in the film, and more. So, yeah, it was. it's a really enjoyable movie. And as I recall, I also... Um, somewhere I'm trying to find it. I, I should be more prepared with. Oh, here it is. I got it. It's um, Batman Begins co collectible lithograph. Um, this this came with the movie. I think it was, maybe it was a limited edition. Um, I might have bought this like a place like Circuit City or Best Buy. And it like maybe the first hundred copies or something came with a lithograph or something like that. Um, I'm not really a huge superhero person, you know, as far as these superhero movies go. I like the Batman movie, Batman Begins. Um, I like the first Superman movie. Um, I, I had that in my collection. I, I would I would have thought to. Just let just thinking now that they're showing you Batman, I'll show you the Superman movie. But um, I'll I'll just include that in the in the miscellaneous movies. Um, but but then he followed up with Dark Knight, which is a really good sequel. Um, great villain, the Joker. Um, I think it it, it kind of slimmed down on the. On, on the special features. Um, the G Gotham Uncovered, creation of a scene, how Christopher Nolan and his team developed the new bat suit and the amazing bat pod, and composer Hans Zimmer on musically characterizing the Joker's reign of chaos. The Dark Knight IMAX scenes, we view, view these six action-packed sequences shot on the largest format possible in their original IMAX framing, just as they were intended. Prologue Hong Kong, armored car chase, Lamborghini crash, pre-wit building and final montage, Gotham Tonight, six episodes of Gotham Cable's premiere news program, the galleries, poster art, production stills, trailers. Really great villain. Um, 
it's a shame that he passed away after he made this movie, but um, great performance. Um, I probably like Batman Be Begins a maybe a tiny bit more. I think they're about equal. Um, I will say I, I did go to the marathon viewing of uh, all three films when the third one came out. And The Dark Knight Rises, I didn't like it that much. I thought it was sort of a regurgitation of The Dark Knight. And um, I don't know. I, it was just another villain that was, I think, basically equal to the Joker. And there, the, there's really nothing to it, you know. And um, I don't know. It seemed kind of contrived and... Didn't seem like a very natural movie. Um, I, I just didn't like it. I, 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 why didn't I like it? Because, because it's, um, it didn't seem very original. It just seemed like it was repeating things. And, um, you know, you have the cops that were underneath in the subway system and they're trapped and you have the, the judge, I think, played by Killian Murphy, and he's, you know, sentencing people to uh, terrible sentences, you know. But I didn't really like it that much. I didn't think it was that great. And um, the the flying bat vehicle, it, it, it's too much. To, you know, it's, it's enough. I, I don't care for it. It's, it. It just doesn't do anything for me. And I hate the ending of it, uh, how... how, how how it resolves itself. So, but I guess, you know, in these days, you know, when they make a movie and they want to make a franchise, they tend to make three of them. So, I don't know, whatever. Um, this film, though, by, by uh, um, Christopher Nolan, I do like. It's called Inception. Um, I'll read this. Acclaimed filmmaker Christopher Nolan directs an international cast in the sci-fi actioner that travels around the globe and into the world of dreams. Dom Cobb, Leonardo DiCaprio, is the best there is at extraction, stealing valuable secrets inside the subconscious during the mind's vulnerable dream state. His skill has made him a coveted player in industrial espionage, but has also made him a fugitive and cost him dearly. Now he may get a second chance if he can do the impossible, inception, planting an idea rather than stealing one. If they succeed, Cobb and his team could pull off the perfect crime, but no planning or expertise can prepare them for a dangerous enemy who seems to predict their every move, an enemy only Cobb could have seen coming. So it's got, for special features, the inception of inception, Christopher Nolan, Shapes his unusual concepts through the movie, the Japanese castle, the dream is collapsing, creating, creating and destroying the castle sets, constructing paradoxical architecture, designing the staircase to nowhere, the freight train, constructing the street, street faring express train. So how this goes in and out of uh, reality and dream is pretty fascinating. Um, the end the end people have been split on. Some people think it's one thing and some people think it's the other. Um, you make up your mind when you watch it and tell me, you know, or tell other people, whatever, what you think. But, you know, I, I have my own interpretation, I suppose. I, um, I would say it's probably a dream in my, my opinion. But... I think it's open-ended enough that you can eat, go either way. So, um, anyways, that's Inception. And then there's... So that's all the Christopher Nolan I have. Um, I thought of buying Interstellar, but I haven't... And I saw it in the theaters, and it's a pretty interesting movie, but I didn't buy it. Maybe I'll buy it at some point. I'm not sure. But there's a movie that sort of reminds me of Inception in my collection, so I thought I'd show it. Uh, it's a dark city. Um, it says on the back, I can teach you to control your power consciously. Let me help you, John. Together we can st stop them. We can take the city back. 
So this is um, a setup where um, these beings that wear these like fedora hats and trench coats, um, they, they stop time and they manipulate uh, the uh, pe people's lives and then they start time up again. Um, it's one of the three films that Roger Ebert did a commentary while he was alive, if, which might, you know, interest you. Um, also has a commentary by director Alex Proyas, writers Lem Dobbs and David S. Goyer. David S. Goyer. Oh, then he wrote Batman Begins, I believe. So... Documentaries, introduction by Alan Pro Proyas, Alex Proyas. Memories of, of um, Memories of Shell Beach, Making of Architecture of Dreams, Production Gallery, Theatrical Trailer. So, you know, I'm I'm on 21 minutes, and I don't want to I don't want to trail too long on these things. I got I got to do the Ben Affleck movies next. So, this is a cool movie, pretty interesting. The production design is, is, is very good, um, which are the sets, um, in case you're wondering. what. As some of you probably know what production design is, but just in case. So, you know, um, I, I, I don't think I've watched this. I have seen this movie, but I don't think I've watched my, my actual copy. And uh, I'd love to listen to the commentary sometime by... Um, um, Roger Reber. I'm sure that, that, that's pretty good. I have listened to his commentary on Citizen Kane. I, I also have Casablanca. I've not heard the commentary for Ca Casablanca. Uh, next up, I have two films by Ben Affleck. First one is Argo. I think this is the first one chronologically, and then the other one I'll show you. But this is about, this is a true story. It's take, it takes place during the Iranian Revolution in the late 70s. And there's some people um, from the embassy, um, and they're, they're holed up in the, in the embassy. And um, Ben Affleck's character is going to get them out of, of, um, out of the embassy and out of the country. Which is kind of hard to do, you know, because the, there are... There are, there are Riotous crowds around around the around Tehran, so he develop he, he devises devises this uh, this this um, idea where he's a Hollywood producer and he he's um, he, um, what does he do? Um, maybe he's going for location shooting location there or. Um, the, the people that he's coming to rescue um, are, are filmmakers. They're not really filmmakers, but they're disguising themselves as filmmakers. And so he, he's trying to devise a way through, uh, through, through, through him being a Hollywood producer to get them out of the country. So that's what the plot is about. It's a really good movie. Um, Alan Argon's in it. John Goodman's in it. Uh, Brian Cranston, good cast. Music by Alexander Desplat, very good composer. A director for photography, Rodrigo Prieto, who did um, Hannibal, I believe, for Ridley Scott. Um, but anyways, um, this is a good movie. I, I don't want to go on too, too long here because I could read this and, and it will add more time, so... Um, oh, and, and if you're wondering about the special features, rescued from Tehran, we were there. Uh, per President Jimmy Carter, Tony Men Mendez, and the actual house guest recount the real life harrowing experience they endured. So that's Argo. And then we'll finish the video off with the town. This is a heist movie, I believe. Um, Jeremy Renner's in this. Um, 
Rebecca Hall, but I, I don't really know who, her character that well. Oh, John Hamm. I didn't even know he was in this. I've seen this movie. I didn't know John Hamm was in it, but uh, maybe I did. Maybe I forgot. I don't know. But he's a good actor. I've, I've watched Mad Men, and he's good in that. Um, and other actors like Blake Lively. I think I've heard of him. Or is it a her? Um, Titus Wil 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 Wilmer and Pete Postlewaite and Chris Chris Cooper. So it's a pretty good cast. And um, it, it's just a movie about people that rob, I think they rob banks. Um, so it takes place in Boston. Um, as far as Argo or ta the town goes, Argo is a better film in my opinion. Uh, but the town's okay. So that that's the end of the video. Um, I don't know the next director we're going to tackle. We got De Palma, Guillermo del Toro, um, Orson Welles, uh, Russ Meyer, I think Terrence Malick. Uh, some television shows. Uh, I'm looking over in my bedroom to see which 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 of the um, Rod, Robert Rodriguez. I showed you one of his films, but I have a few others of his that I, that I can show you. Um, did I show you one of his films? I can't remember. I think I did, but I can't remember the title. Oh yes, I did. Sin City. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't, I can't recall what, what, oh, Lars von Trier, Lars von Trier, another one. We got two films with Angelina Jolie, um, Dave Cronenberg, Ridley Scott, Steven Spielberg, Disney and Pixar, um, and, 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 um, two films that Char Charlie Kaufman wrote the screenplay for. Uh, I'm sort of rummaging my brain right now and trying to figure them all, all the, the people out and the titles. But that's what's coming up. After all that, we're going to sort of go here. We're just going to go miscellaneous, I think, and just finish the, the collection that way. So, uh, so I am, I, right now I am extracting DVDs and Blu-rays out of the, um, boxes and I am, I am taking them from other places like the towers and the bookcase in between so it's not as as well as, as I was planning it well not well but it, it's not like I planned it like I told you before how, how we would do it um, I'm thinking now um, this this is a better way to do it because the way we've been doing it previously makes it more um, makes it more, if you want to watch one about uh, um, Ridley Scott, if you want to watch one about David Lean, if you want to watch one about Hitchcock, Kurosawa, um, if you want to watch one about Pasolini, Bertolucci, um, if you want to watch one about uh, Godard, uh, Bergman, box sets, you know, they're, they're separated enough and you're not like rummaging through and you're not like having to go through every single video to find, you know, something that you might want to latch on to. So anyways, that, that's my spiel, so to speak. Um, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure what uh, director or subject matter I'll show you next, but it will be something. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Thanks. Okay, bye.